God bless you guys. Welcome to another video. I hope that you guys were able to go through the last video okay. I know that it was longer than my other videos, but please bear with me. I really needed to get through all that content uh, because repentance is the foundation of Christianity. And if the foundation is not strong and really, really uh, just, just uh, completely bathed in scripture, then honestly nothing else matters. And so I really wanted to be sure that you guys understood that. So that way when we go to the next topics, it'll be smooth sailing, amen, amen. And so for this next video, we're going to be talking about confession. And I think that it is really important to have a biblical foundation of confession, why it's important and what could happen if you don't confess, amen, because Confession, biblical confession, can bring tremendous liberty to people's lives. And with all the soul care that I've done over these last couple of years, I know confession is one of those big things that could really allow for people to experience freedom in Christ. You have no idea that when people confess what's in their heart and when they uh, just take what's in their soul that they have been holding on for so long and they release it onto someone who's trustworthy and they release it to the Lord, they experience so much liberation from the powers of darkness and uh, the enemy loses a lot of ground in their life. Amen. And uh, I have seen m many deliverances go so much more smoothly when people confess. Amen. And so we're going to get into that today. Amen. Praise God. And so one rule about soul care that you, you cannot beat around the bush, that you can't skip, is having secrets. No secrets are allowed. Um, secrets give the devil a foothold in your life because then when you have secrets in your life the devil has something on you and so I want to make it very clear from the get-go that Jesus does not want us having secrets when it comes to sin and I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus the way he was in the book of John chapter 14, verse 30, when he said, I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. Other translation says he has nothing on me. And so I want us all to be like Jesus where the ruler of this world, Satan, is coming and he has nothing on us where we can live in the light and we can live freely without him coming to oppress us because of secrets. And whether it's something that has happened to you or something you have done, if left a secret unrepented for, it can eat away at your soul. So confessing your sins to a trusted friend or individual is like what laughter is for the soul. Medicine. Uh confessing your sins to a trusted individual you're probably asking well what do you mean by what do you mean by sins what are you talking about exactly i'm talking about things like secret sins secret moments in your life secret tragedies that you never told anyone about before whether you did something or something happened to you etc your dog died your loved one died and then you know i know that sounds funny when people mention like your pet died or your pet hamster died and you are feeling so bent out of shape about it but here's the funny thing when it comes to grieving whether it's an animal or a human if it meant something to you then that is worth grieving and you should be able to talk about it in a safe manner without being judged and I'm gonna leave that at that there because I have a whole other PowerPoint dedicated to things of that topic when it comes to grieving and healing but let's continue James chapter 5 verse 16 says this therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working confession is biblical now I know that we have seen the term confession and the act of confession abused in other religious circles and other denominations 
but confession, biblical confession, is biblical. Confessing your sins to one another, to people who are safe to confess it to, is a biblical thing, and it's something that we should be practicing on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but I confess things regularly to confidants that I trust. Because let me tell you something, I'm going to keep my soul clean. I am not giving the devil any hold over my life. I will not give the devil a place. I will not give him any bragging rights to me or my life. I'm going to keep my life clean, sanctified, and washed in the blood of Jesus always. And you can too. And so some of you might believe that you are above redemption, which is why you choose to keep your sins a secret. Some of you have lived your life thinking, I have done so many bad things. I am the worst person who has ever existed. You know that You know that scripture that Paul says that I am the worst sinner? Yeah, that's me. I am the worst sinner to ever exist as well. I, you know, there's no sinner greater than me. But let me tell you something. You need to embrace this truth. There is no sin that God cannot forgive. Remember, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Some of you have been condemning yourself and letting Satan condemn you for too long. Some of you have been wounded by the church or people you knew outside the church. You trusted them with your stuff and they abused that trust. And we will talk in a moment about how to fix and deal with that. And, and I understand that those things are real and I'm sorry that those things happened. I really am. I've been through that before so I understand what it feels like to have your trust betrayed. But it's time for you to experience healing through the power of repentance and confession. Look at what the word says about those who belong to Christ. Romans 8, 1 to 2 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And so for those of you who condemn yourself, you need to remember that that is the devil. The Lord is not condemning you. The Lord forgives you, and he wants to forgive you. But you need to come forward about your sin that you have been hiding in your closet for a long time. Concealing sin is a no-no. Proverbs 28.13 confirms this when it says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy when you confess your sin there is a weight lifted off your shoulders that nothing else could lift it off when you confess your sin there is now an opportunity for you to be healed from the wounds that the enemy has placed on you or use sin in your life to create wounds and weight in your life when you confess that can be removed but i want to talk about what it looks like when you conceal sin and i want to go to the old testament and talk about a popular story and that is the sin of achan I want you guys to see what it looks like when you conceal your sin, when you try to hide something that's done, and what could happen. So Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 7, and uh, we're going to go through, I think we're going to go through the whole chapter, so bear with me. Joshua chapter 7. But the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Avon on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. 
So the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai are few. So about 3,000 men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim, and struck, down, uh, struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Oh, that we have been content and dwell on the other side of the Jordan. O oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? And then this is where the sin of Achan, the concealed sin of Achan, gets really revealed. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken uh, some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore... The children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctifying the people, saying, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed things from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families, and the family which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of, of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerahites, and he brought the family of the Zerahites man by man, and Zebdi was taken. Then he brought this household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zer Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done when I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment. 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels I coveted and took them and there they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver underneath it so Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath it and they took it from the midst of the tent brought it to Joshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zarai the silver the garment the wedge of gold his sons his daughters his oxen his donkeys his sheep his tent and all he had and brought them to the valley of Achor and Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones still to this, there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore the name of the place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day. I want you guys to understand something very important here.
Achan did not confess his sin because he had a repentant heart. Achan confessed his sin because he got caught. There is a huge difference between confession because you got caught and confession because of the conviction of what you did. So I want you guys to understand that that's very important because Achan did conceal his sin. If the Lord had not reacted in anger towards Israel, nobody would have realized what Achan had done. And idolatry would have probably spread among the camp again, just like it did with the golden calf. And the Lord was trying to prevent that from happening all over again. And it, it, Achan was concealing his sin. And he only confessed it because Joshua basically made him do it. And the result of it was death. Because ultimately, as you heard the passage I read, the things that Achan took um, quite possibly some of those things could have been used for idolatry or the, or the thi or the things that were symbolized with it that that the, 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 the spiritual energy that was imparted into those particular objects from that place could have had demonic attachment that the Lord was trying to keep away from Israel. And so the Lord had to purify the land and pure and, and cleanse the evil from among them. And we understand how things were in the Old Testament because Jesus had not come yet. However, I want to now show you a New Testament example of concealing sin. And so if you would turn with me now to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 11. And a lot of Christians, for some reason, seem to avoid this, this passage. They seem to avoid this passage a lot. But I'm, I'm going to show you something. Actually, I'm not going to show you something. I'm going to remind you of something. I'm going to remind you that the Lord is just when it comes to sin. And so Acts, chapter 5, verse 1 to 11 says the following. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself. Now I can go into a whole other revelation about Satan filling the heart of Ananias. And I could argue that right then and there, that is your proof for deliverance ministry in the New Testament. But that's another teaching for another day. I mentioned that in passing. But don't you think for one second that scripture does not validate the ministry of Jesus. Anyways, let's continue. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much? She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? 
Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and, ca and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard about these things. We see this story of the New Testament where there was sin being concealed. And we see how even though the cross happened and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin, this does not mean that God has forsaken his just nature. God is still just. The only thing keeping the God, the God's wrath from striking the earth right now is the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us on the cross. The mercy of God. That is the only reason why we are still here. And so the moral of the story, or stories, concealing your sin, also known as having secrets, brings death to your soul and really hinders your walk with the Lord in a way that is truly unnecessary. I've learned in life that people who deal with secrets oftentimes also deal with a lot of physical and emotional issues, whether it be headaches, joint pain, chest pain, anxiety, depression, panic attacks, isolation, etc. Do you identify with any of these? Have you lived a life of pain because you kept a secret all these years? Do you ever wonder why your soul is always broken despite how hard you try to live a normal life? Do you wonder why you can never seem to silence those thoughts in your head that constantly weigh you down every day? If you have secrets in your life of things that have happened to you or things that you've done, this is probably weighing you down. There is no way to prevent that, this inevitable result of concealing one's sin uh, from taking place. There's no way to prevent this except confessing your sin. And so, everything concerning repentance and confession that I've spoken about in these last two videos, all of it has to do with walking in the light. This will open a new dimension of freedom in your life. 1 John 1, verse 5 to 7 says this, This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And so I have this saying that I like to say to people when addressing this issue of secrets. I always say to them, where there are secrets, there is darkness. And where there's darkness, the devil is there. And I don't know about you, but I don't want the devil in my soul. I don't want him in my life. I don't want to be friends with the devil. Are you friends with the devil? But I'm going to go somewhere right now for a moment that I wasn't intending on going. But I'm going to go there anyways. You know why some of you don't confess your sins? Your secrets? The reason why some of you don't confess your secrets is because truthfully, you like your demons. You like how they make you feel. You like that little bit of false power that it gives you. You like that little bit of excitement that it brings. Some of you are friends with your demons. And you're not going to kick out your friend. You're not going to expose your friend, right? Maybe that's some of the reason why you don't confess your sins. 
your secrets. Aside from the traumas that have happened to you, this is another reason why some people don't confess. But it's going to eat away at you. Regardless. Regardless whether it's your friend or your enemy, if you have secrets, it will destroy your soul. And so, there were things in my life, I'm going I'm to share a little bit about me. There were things in my life that I had unconfessed and I needed to bring it into the light. But once I brought these things into the light, there was tremendous freedom. And to this day, I keep my confession current, as I stated earlier. Especially before I do any ministry involving deliverance. Because you best believe I am not going to get called out for anything. <laughs> not today, Satan. Keep brothers and sisters around you that can be your confidants. Again, I have them, and they are absolutely amazing. I keep my soul clean all the time with my brothers that I that know how to handle my soul. Find yours. Find your confidants. Not every person that you hang out with deserves to be your confidant. You need to really be able to discern who your confidant can be. You need to be sure that they are people who are trustworthy. You need to be able to make sure that they are people who can be trusted with your information. You need to be sure that they are people who don't have a reputation of being a a person who goes around blabbing, who goes around running their mouth. You need to make sure that this person has godly character. You need to make sure this person has integrity. You need to make sure that this person prays, is a praying person. You need to make sure that they are mature enough to be able to handle your mess and not look at you funny after you've told them your mess. So these are some of the things to look out for when you're looking for a confidant. Find one. And so the big question I have for you today that I always ask people, do you have any secrets in your life today that you need to confess? Whether it's things that you've done or things that have happened to you. And if you do, and I'm pretty sure you do. Find a safe person to share those things with. Find a safe person that you know will keep your information confidential. And so now I want to give you some application that I said I was going to do in the last video. I want to give you guys some compliment, uh, some exercises that you guys can do for repentance and confession. The way you apply repentance is in your time of prayer. You tell the Lord what you want to repent for, and then after you are done, ask Him to fill you with His love, peace, and joy. For example, and you can repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I just want to ask for forgiveness for the name what it is. Name what it is. And now I receive your peace, your love, and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. That is a general prayer of repentance for you. Now, for confession, you can find someone you trust or know is trustworthy and bring your stuff into the light with God in them. And you can, you just find a safe space and just confess to them discreetly so that way there are no one, there's nobody eavesdropping. 
confess your confess what you feel you need to confess them. And after someone confesses, I do this prayer by first asking them. And you can follow this prayer. Are you sorry for your sins? And most likely the answer they will give you is yes. And then what you can say after that is, then in the name of Jesus, I absolve you from guilt. Amen. So let's do this example again for those of you if, you've, if you miss anything because I was explaining it a little bit to you. So we will do repentance prayer. And I will use an example of what that looks like. Lord Jesus, I just want to ask for forgiveness for gossip. And now I receive your peace, your joy, and love. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for confession. When someone confesses to you, after they're done, you ask them, are you sorry for your sins? Yes. Then in Jesus' name, I absolve you of guilt. Amen. And that's all I have for you today on the topic of confession. And I pray that it was a blessing to you guys. And so, I'm going to pray. But before I do that, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be coming out with the next video tomorrow. And I'm unsure which one I'm going to do. The next one I might do is forgiveness. And that's one of my favorite ones to talk about. Because that's one of the ones that I've invested the most time in. And I've seen tremendous freedom helping people in forgiveness. So I might do that tomorrow, or I might deal with uh, destroying lies. I might do one of those things. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see if I can do that. Heavenly Father, I lift up your people right now. I pray that you would help them to grow in this area of confession. That they would find safe people to confess their sins and their secrets to. That they would leave no secret unconfessed. That they would take that ground away from the enemy and experience freedom in Christ. May the peace of God descend upon them now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys, and I pray you guys have a wonderful night.